Okay, in this video, I want to talk about exactly how to do the experiment for determining that reaction coefficients, okay? So there's actually two parts to this experiment today, both of which are going to be done through the spectrophotometer. So the first part is you're actually going to do a scan of a range of wavelength to find one that gives you the best absorption, in other words, the best signal, okay? Let me make that uh, point really clear here. This is very analogous to if you're going to use an instrument, right? Let's say your cell phone in this case, and you're trying to get a very clear conversation. You're trying to get a very clear signal. Well, you're going to walk around in the room until you find a spot that gives you the best signal. Same thing if you're trying to listen to a radio. You're going to walk around until you find a spot where you get the best signal. So this is really the same thing. You're trying to scan the spectrophotometer through a range of wavelength until you find one that gives you the best signal. To do this, you're going to need to have a couple of different solutions. The first one is going to be your blank, which is just going to be the phenantrolene solution. Remember, that's one of your reactants. The other one is going to be mixture number five on your lab procedure. And that happens to be 2.5 milliliter phenantrolene and 2.5 milliliter iron. These are your two reactants mixed in equal volumes. Now, so how are you going to do these measurement with these two solutions? The first thing you need to do is go to the spec, take your blank, and put it inside the sample holder in the cuvette. Okay? And then what you need to do is you need to look at your lab procedure and go to the wavelength where it asks you to first start making this measurement. It might be 460, it might be 500, it just depends on what the instruction is on the lab procedure itself. So go to that wavelength, and then once you find that wavelength, you need to zero the spectrophotometer. The way to do that was described in the previous video. Once you get that spectrophotometer to read zero, you take the blank solution out, you put another cuvette in that is filled now with this test solution. And what you want to do is just read what is the absorbance of the test solution on the spectrophotometer. Write that down and then move on to the next solution. So then you're going to go to the next wavelength, put the blank in again, zero it, and then take the blank out, put the test solution in, and read the absorbance of that solution in that wavelength. And you do that for that whole range of wavelength that the lab procedure tells you to do. And whichever wavelength gives you the highest absorbance, that's the wavelength you want to use to make the rest of your measurements of part B. Okay? So here's the actual picture of that spectrophotometer, right? Just to remind you again of what that looks like. Your sample holder is here. Remember, you're going to adjust this to get to whatever wavelength you need to be. And then afterwards, once you have your blank inside, you're going to adjust this one to get to zero. Once you get to zero, you take that blank out, put your test solution in, and just read what that number says on it. It has to be recorded for every wavelength that you measure. Okay, now once you find that wavelength that gives you the maximum absorption, then you're done. Basically, you just need to measure the rest of all your samples using that wavelength. So you're going to go to the second part called Part B in your lab procedure, make all the solutions, right? and then just measure the absorbance of each of those solutions. I think it's numbered from 1 to 11. So you need to measure the absorbance of solutions 1 through 11, write them down, and then that's it. That's the end of the lab. The rest of it is you need to plot it, remember, find the actual point with the most amount of product, and then figure out the ratio of the stoichiometric coefficients. Now, a couple of things. For part B, you don't need to blank every time you make a measurement unlike in part A where you do, right? Because you're changing wavelengths, okay? Another thing that's a little easier, will make the experiment goes a little easier, is to make all the solutions 1 through 11 before you start making any measurement, whether it's part A or part B. If you do that, then the whole experiment will go a lot more smoothly.